What's interesting about the Combine is every year you'll have guys that kind of fly under the radar as prospects, and they go to the Combine and they absolutely blow things up. And then all of a sudden the draft type about them can not match the reality of maybe who they are as a player or where they are as a player. And you get those other guys uh, that you feel are really, really good football players, and they don't test well at the Combine. They don't do well at the Combine. And then you start to go back and rethink things, and sometimes it can be paralysis by overanalysis, and you overthink things too much, and you don't let the film dictate uh, what the player actually is, which is what should largely happen. If anything, the combine should be, in some ways, a validation of what you see. But to me, at the end of the day, if you think that a guy plays with great speed on the field, but you anticipate him running, let's say, a 4.6 in the 40 at the combine, and he runs a 4.75 or a 4.8. Should you really drop a player that much if he plays like a 4.4? You know. But then, then sometimes you get the, the combine results that are interesting because you anticipate one guy being one type of dude, and then he goes to the combine, and he works out in an entirely different way. And Jordan Willis from Kansas State was one of those guys to me, was that I thought he was going to not really do well at the combine, or if he did, it would just be in certain areas. And then he went and had a really good combine. I think a lot of people went back and revisited the film and maybe were trying to justify what they saw at the combine. And I did that too. I went back and took a second look. And at the end of the day, I still came away largely unimpressed. Just because a guy produces at the college level is not a guarantee that they produce at the NFL level. Just because a guy has good straight line quickness and speed, which Jordan Willis does, does not make them a twitchy athlete, does not mean that they've got great hip flexibility or great ability to adjust to plays, um, or that they can make plays all over the place. Because in Jordan Willis's case, it's frustrating. He can't. That's what's really sad. When you talk about a guy that runs in the mid-four-fives in the 40 at 250 pounds plus, he's got good size for the position. Even though he looks on film, he kind of looks awkward. He's kind of got skinny legs. He, he looks a little top-heavy, but... He's got decent height and decent length for the position. He's got a decent amount of explosiveness, especially heading in a linear kind of straight-ahead direction. He's got a good first couple of steps. Um, sometimes he looks more explosive than other times. Uh, but again, when you're talking about guys you project as edge rushers for the NFL, you know, you look at the size and you look at things like first and second step quickness, and he has them. And he's really good at getting off the ball on a consistent basis. He really is. Uh, you'd like to have that type of pedigree or starting point to work with, that foundation to work with, because you feel like you can make a good football player. You can mold that clay of an athlete into something more. But man, when you watch Jordan Willis on film, even though he had production at the college level at Kansas State, I just really am concerned about whether or not he can really be a productive player at the NFL level. For a guy that had some decent sack numbers, I really didn't see a whole lot of pass rush ability, frankly. While he got the first step to beat people off of the edge, he really lacks in terms of leverage and hip flexibility specifically uh, to do anything that requires any change of direction skills whatsoever. Um, on top of that, his technique is very lacking. He's not very good in terms of using uh, his hands. Um, just overall, his punch is very bad. What I really hate about him, now granted, part of that is the fact that he was utilized in a three-point stance primarily at Kansas State. What was really awkward about him is when he got into his stance, he consistently started with his head looking at the ground. And not even like, you know, you bend over and you're just looking straight down instead of cocking your head up. This is a guy that goes past parallel in his stance. Like he literally looks like he's got bad technique as a starter coming out of the blocks in track and field. So he's not even getting into a good athletic position as a sprinter, let alone as a football player, which is an entirely different matter. And his technique is just absolutely terrible. Showed me very little ability to play the run. Uh, horrible at getting off of blocks, frankly. Really, really bad at using his hands. And again, I talk about a guy that's very top-heavy, um, a guy that really lacks change of direction skills, lateral agility. I mean, so many of these things just came up on film consistently that when you watched the combine, you felt like an idiot for a minute because you said, wait a second, this guy is that athletic? He's only that athletic because it's all in a straight line. And it's frustrating because you look at a dude like this, how many edge rushers you wish were this athletic in a straight line and this quick and this explosive in a straight line? 
but anything outside of a straight line and so much of the NFL, you've got to be able to adjust on the move. You've got to be able to change directions. He can't do it consistently. He's not even that good at finishing plays to me. I think his football IQ is subpar. I didn't know that I felt like Jordan Willis was much of a player, even though, like I said, he put up some nice numbers in college. But when you, even after the combine, you go back and watch the film, no matter how much you want to make somebody into something, sometimes you just can't. It's just not there. And when I look at Jordan Willis, I see a guy that's a fifth-round talent at the very best, and I might even be a little bit generous. Um, you know, maybe he's getting some marks for being a hard worker, a team player, a team captain, being reliable, answering the bell every game the past couple of seasons. But he's just not a guy that I project being a very good football player at the NFL level. Because, again, how often do you actually play in a straight line? He has no change of direction ability whatsoever. He's bad against the run. He's not anybody that you can envision utilizing in coverage because, again, the second he's got a game, you demonstrate any type of hip flexibility or hip turn or change of direction skills or any quality of footwork, it's fucking over. He's not all that effective in terms of the pass rush moves that he actually does have. He's terrible at getting off of blocks. What about this guy makes you think that he's even a day two pick? I'm not getting it. I won't say he was massively overrated like I did, let's say, with the Charles Harris, because I think the, a lot of the reality was is they felt a lot of people feel like straight ahead, he's very good. Anything else, you're not worth a shit. Now, granted, he's still draftable because you look at a guy like this and you hope that maybe you can get it out of him. Maybe you can do some things in your program that get him to improve his overall athleticism, improve his hip flexibility. You massively improve his technique. Um, you get him into a situation where he's playing as a 3-4 outside linebacker, he's going to be a much better natural fit than as a 4-3 defensive end, even with that lack of lateral agility and change of direction athleticism, he's just not strong enough to play as a defensive end in the 4-3 at the NFL level. Um, I really have trouble envisioning how Jordan Willis is going to make it. I really do. I hope he does, but again, I just don't see it.